Yes Day has very high production values and definitely seems like a movie that would play in theaters, even though it's Netflix's movie of the week this week. But I hated it! So here's why. All right, so, like, really, I hate watch this thing. I kept thinking maybe it would get better because the production values are so high, but it did not. I mean, it's watchable. It's watchable, but prepare to be like, have a low level annoyance throughout the film. There's one very good actor, Arturo Castro, who's worth, I hope casting directors watch this or other producers, because uh, we're going to talk about Jennifer Garner in a moment and cast him in other stuff, because he was fantastic. Now, speaking of Jennifer Garner, she doesn't just star in Yes Day, but as I just said, she produced it as well. Good for her. You know, good for her getting out there and getting work for herself. She's picked a great vehicle for her. I mean, the role fits her like a glove, but all the flaws of her mom character seem to also be producer flaws for her behind the scenes. Alison Torres is so focused on trying to make her family's life perfect. The first 10 to 15 minutes of the movie are excellent. But she's actually doing the opposite. As her son says in an embarrassing and damning school project, his mother is like a dictator. I, I can't, it's, I didn't think she was that bad. I mean, she clearly is making mistakes, but that was a mean thing to do. We'll talk about that. But so he's just a child. So to him, the way he views a dictator is someone who rules with an iron fist. But a dictator, I think it's funny that he, uh, you know, inadvertently discovered propaganda <laughs> or, you know, like the press fighting against a dictator. And the dictator was awfully angry about it. But anyway, the thing about a dictator is that a dictator makes it all about themselves. And that is what Allison is doing with her family and what Garner is doing with this movie. None of the other roles are at all developed. They are just cardboard cutouts as family members and as other actors in this film. Jennifer Garner's Allison Torres needs a family to interact with, and she comes up, and she, you know, they, that, that's, that's like, that's just the threshold she wants them to meet. Edgar Ramirez, I'm sorry to say, is particularly miscast. Like, what a mistake. Because while he's a strong, dramatic actor, he was very menacing in The Undoing every time he came to, came to visit Nicole Kidman as the police detective, but he just can't cut loose. And he can't even not cut loose in a comedic way. I mean, the best, the best way I can describe it is, do you remember when low-key James Franco had to co-host with overcompensating whirlwind Anne Hathaway at the Oscars? Same thing here. Ramirez seems practically comato comatose next to Garner. I've heard that for a while, Edgar Ramirez and Pedro Pascal actually found themselves fighting for the same roles in Hollywood. Although I think at this point, Pascal, Pascal has pulled ahead. Although he did just star in his own Netflix family movie earlier this year. But while watching Yes Day, because I, I know that they've always been up for the same roles for a while, I was like, this is a case where you should have gone with Pedro Pascal. I think he would have killed it here. Although he would have been serious competition for Garner for who was the cooler character in the movie, the cooler parent. I don't know if Garner just did a bad job selecting a co-star or if maybe she wanted someone she could easily outshine. And we've seen actors do that before. It's always a mistake. You know, you benefit from having a really strong whole film around you. Uh, but Edgar Ramirez, just, he was a mistake. He should, I mean, even once they started filming, you know, just like they did in Back to the Future, where they were like, I, I forget that guy's name, um, but remember they were like, oh, he's not any good. And let's go, let's put Michael J. Fox in here and just refilm everything, you know? I think that they should have done that here. Cause he, just from the very first frame, you're like, He's not working. Uh, as for the Torres children, while I get the families have problems and that's why they needed a yes day here, right? This movie doesn't show any glimmer of what this family is fighting for. Where, where are the good times? I mean, the children are so mean to their mother and so disrespectful that even though she's clearly making mistakes as a parent, her children just go too far. And again, as a producer, Garner sacrifices the likability of her child characters to make sure you really feel bad for her character, which I did. I mean, if you want to make sure no one ever wants to have children, they should have them watch Yes Day because like, these kids are just horrible. Although, speaking of children, the movie does make you see how hard it is even for child actors to get work. They're part of the grind too. Because if you're wondering where you've seen Jenny Ortega and her friend Layla before, it was really bothering me during the movie. I was like, I know these actors, where have I seen them? It's You Season 2 and Little Fires Everywhere. They're both very talented, but those were so much bigger roles in those two projects that to see them have smaller project, you know, this is what they went on to, just goes to show you that, you know, acting is a job and it's a journey. 
It's a marathon, not a sprint. And even beyond the Torres family, Yes Day works very hard to have representation across the board, which is great. It even says on the Netflix page, this is part of Netflix's Representation Matters initiative. And I agree, representation does matter. But this is so obvious about it and it's so... It just, it's so, so across the board to the point where it seems more like it's, this is what, you know, tokenism, checking boxes instead of making it organic. That again, just like Garner, the movie's trying too hard. However, Arturo Castro shines in the third act. He just really is a jolt of adrenaline to this movie uh, as a newbie police officer who teams up with Garner in a crisis. And he steals every scene that he is in. He's phenomenal. He should get more movies. He should have his own TV show. I was very impressed. So how about those yes days that uh, the movie is clearly trying to make a thing? This is based on a book too. I think they clearly want people to see this movie and say, we should have our own yes day. Well, we'll talk about that in a moment. But first, speaking of moms, when I was growing up, my mom always made sure I took my vitamins every day. And now that I'm adult, an adult, I still take vitamins, but when you know, as my mom would suspect, I do some days forget to take them. But Care Of can help make sure you never skip a day. Just go to their website and take their free five minute quiz. I mean, that's a fun thing to do for five minutes. Just go over there and take it. And that will give you a suggestion of what vitamins to take to meet your health goals. And then you can select which of the suggestions you would actually like to purchase. Then you get individually wrapped packets for the day that you can simply open and take every day to make sure again, you don't miss your vitamins. So as we get to spring, wouldn't you like to have a spring in your step by making sure you're in the best health possible? Well, you can do that with Care Of. And here's how you can get 50% off your first order. Go to TakeCareOf.com and enter code BTT50. Again, that's TakeCareOf.com and enter code BTT50 to get 50% off your first order. Moms also like it when you save money. All right, so back to yes days. Well, it seems like a fun idea at first, two problems quickly emerge that will make sure that no family ever actually has a yes day in real life. I was horrified. One, it seems like the Torres children are trying to torture their parents rather than have a fun day. And I don't think that's what Yes Day is supposed to be about. What parent would sign up for that? And then two, like making your dad have explosive diarrhea, I feel, is really a mean thing to do. And I don't know why any child would think that was an amusing day. Uh, I'd be like, I was usually, I'd be like, I'm so sorry. All right, and two, Yes Day ends up causing so much damage to the Taurus car and home that the family could have gone on at least two, at least two really nice family vacations for what it will cost them to clean up this mess. Parents, the Taurus and beyond, should sit their children down and explain the harsh realities of property damage. I was like, I mean, I believe when I was a child, even I realized how bad that was. And that's how I think you have to make it clear to children. I think the Torres family should have said, this is two Disney World vacations that you've blown on this stupid day. We could have gone to Disney World twice for what's gonna, it's, what it's gonna cost to, to clean this up. And that's valuable, that's, that's good parenting. <laughs> All right, so that's my review of Yes Day, which again is Netflix's movie of the week. As I said, it's watchable, but get prepared to be annoyed. I mean, I guess if, I mean, if you want to make sure that no one will ever want to have a yes day in your family, I, I guess you could watch this. So that's my thoughts. But Artur, um, Arturo Castro, I hope that this, uh, he gets work off of this. So share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.